So now we'll go and start discussing um, two of these types of files that we, we mentioned before. The first one is LEF or Library Exchange Format. So what is LEF? A LEF is an abstract definition of the layout for place and route. It comes in a readable ASCII format. It contains detailed pin information for connecting, and it does not include front of the line, poly diffusion, etc. data. So here we see the layout view is type you might see in one of the, uh, the layout tools. And what we do is we take this and we use something called the abstract generator, and we just leave the pins and different types of obstructions that we may have inside the, the view. Okay. Um, so what an abstract is, it only contains these types of things, the outline, what, so this is the layout view, we copy the outline, what the size is, the, the, the height and the width, we have the pin location, so here you can see the pin locations over here, A, B, and Y, and we have metal blockages, so these uh, types of metals, we can't put a type of uh, metal one through here, else it'll cause a short over when it touches this okay so that's all we need to know actually for the place and route tool and as you can see we also want to have everything uh, only in metal one that's not a must but uh, it's good practice okay so um, here's a first look at what the syntax of the left format uh, looks like so again another example of a layout of some sort of an inverter and here we have the left of it um, what we're going to have inside here is we're going to have the header uh, this is called a, a macro is each cell name. This cell is called IV for inverter. And it has different uh, things here in the header that tell about it. For example, the physical cell size uh, here, it's three microns by 12 microns. Um, in addition, it has something called symmetry, which means we can flip it both to the X, we can turn it right and left, and we can uh, flip it to the Y, we can do up and down. We can't do the 90 degrees, so maybe when I said right and left, that could be uh, confusing, but we can use it both like this and flipped, so VDD is on the bottom and ground is on the top. Um, it has something called site core, which we'll discuss in a minute, and then it starts going into the descriptions of the different pins. So when we look at this pin here over, over here A, it says pin A, it says it's an input pin. It has information for um, doing antenna rule detection, which we'll discuss in a later lecture. And then it has what we call a port, which is actually the physical description of where this appears. So it's all relative to the origin, which is at zero, zero down here. And it says that uh, metal one is a rectangle, that, um, that there's a metal one rectangle um, from 0.5 microns and up five microns, that's this, to one micron and up 5.5 microns. That's the description of the pin, and we'll have that for each and every one of the pins here and each part of the pin layer. Then we can have something called OBS or obstruction that tells us where, for example, these uh, metal one pieces are that we can't route over. There is another uh, piece of the left uh, definition, which we call the tech left or the technology left. So uh, the technology left contains simplified information about the technology for use by the placer and the router. Um, that means that how do we know what the metal one layer was on the previous slide? Maybe it's called M1 and maybe it's called MET1 or something like that. So that has to be described before and that's in the part of the left called the technology left. Sometimes it's provided as a separate file and sometimes it's in the same file as your standard cell library, just depending on how the uh, technology provider and the IP provider uh, give us this information. So what does a tech left have in it? It has uh, things such as the layer definition. So you, hear, you see here layer met one, it's a type of routing layer. This is the pitch and the width and the spacing, what direction it should be, what its resistance per square is and what its capacitance per, uh, per square is. And um, then we uh, have all this type of stuff in it. So the name, the layer type, the electrical property, design rules and so forth. Okay, so that's one part of the left. Another part of the left is this site definition, which is the X and Y grid of the library. Okay, usually we'll use a core site. I'll go in a bit more to what the uh, left uh, site looks like in a second. And um, finally, we have other things such as vias. Vias are a special uh, type of layer in the left. There are lots of different, each type of via, via one, via two, and so forth that connect between the layers. They have different um, 
cut patterns which we can have because they have to be um, covered by uh, the metal above them and the metal below them and they sometimes have to have specific sizes so this will be a big chunk of our technology left will be description of those vias and a good via definition is very important for place and route um, we'll have different things like the units if we're in microns or farads or whatever um, and then the grids for layout and routing such as the tracks and so forth just an additional point here that uh, sometimes that we also have to have parasitic extraction rules they can be very basic what's known as cap tables that's not uh, sufficient for today's technologies or more detailed like a binary file such as cadences quantus or qrc tech file they have to be provided to help us do parasitic extraction it's part of the technology left so um just things that are important about the technology left when we talk about uh, standard cells we usually define a standard cell uh, according to how many tracks the standard cell has when we say that all the standard cells have the same height because the uh, distance between vdd and ground is uh, the same for all the cells in a certain library well when we try to say something about the library we say it's like a 12 track library an 8 track library um, and that means how many tracks of metal one we can stick in between vdd and ground and uh, one track is basically a pitch of metal one so that's uh, the width of metal one plus the spacing of metal one um, why do we use the track number or the number of tracks as a, a describer for a standard cell library? And that's because the wider the uh, the, the the higher the standard the, the standard cell is, or the larger the distance between VDD and ground is, or uh, equivalently, the the high the more number of tracks we can put in between VDD and ground, it means that we can get wider transistors. So, for example, in this uh, in this type of a cell, we can have a piece of poly like that and put some diffusions around it, and uh, we can put a diffusion that's that big, or we can also put a diffusion, let's say, that would be that big, but we cannot put a diffusion that would be that big. If we wanted a wider diffusion, what we'd have to do is actually make another finger and then have uh, uh, connect several transistors to make this uh, larger transistor. Therefore, uh, when we have a high number like an 11 or 12 track library that means we can put really wide transistors on one uh, string of poly here and that means we can get fast cells or high drive strength cells on the other hand if we only need a small transistor then we're wasting a lot of area because the, the whole height of the standard cell library is uh, is larger so it really provides us a trade-off between fast cells which would be these 11 or 12 track libraries or uh, versus like high area efficiency cells which would be like a seven to eight track library or somewhere in the middle which would be kind of like a nine or ten track library okay so i mentioned before this thing called a site and a site has to appear for every standard cell library it's actually the definition of the uh, smallest unit in a standard cell it's kind of similar to defining in our lego pieces you know what the uh, distance between these little uh, dots is in uh, the horizontal and vertical direction so they'll all connect and what we have to define in a, in a site is at the very minimum what our um, smallest size is uh, for height and for width okay so uh, that means that basically it's the minimum size cell that you could possibly have um, and the height which would be uh, written here is always going to be um, much, uh, it's going to be uh, equivalent for all of the cells in our library, except for maybe um, double row, uh, double row cells, but uh, they're, uh, they're an outlier. And uh, the X axis, the horizontal pitch is it's, we, we're not going to be able to make a cell that's that small, but um, every cell has to be multiple of that in the X direction. Okay, so that's what a, uh, a, a site, that's what our, what our site is, and we just called the site here core. We could have called it whatever we want, and it has a class core. That means it's used for standard cells versus class pad, which is used for IOs, and it has symmetry, which tells us which ways we can flip those types of uh, cells by default, unless it's overrid inside the um, actual cell definition. Um, another thing is that the pins, we want to have the pins coincide with the routing track, and that enables easy connection of higher level layers uh, by just dropping a via. So if we have our uh, standard cell over here, we, we, we're going to have a bunch of things defined inside the left. It's kind of to summarize, this X here marks what we would call the cell origin. It's usually going to be at zero, zero of the cell. 
okay we're going to have the pr boundary that's going to be the width and that's going to be the height in the cell size we're going to have the horizontal grid which is where the metal one tracks go on a horizontal level we're going to have the um, vertical grid where the metal two tracks go on a vertical level and of course uh, higher uh, higher level tracks as well and we want to have our pins fall on the middle of these vertical tracks so then we can just dump a via down there and it'll connect nicely so we've gotten to the part of our lecture where we look into the chip hall of fame and this week we have this nice little chip over here on the right and um, that is the acorn computers arm one processor which we're just going to look at after we had two intel chips in our first two lectures so acorn computers i'm sure not a lot of you have heard of uh, you've probably heard of uh, arm and um, the reason that you've heard of arm is because your smartphone or almost any uh, machine you have that has a computer uh, some sort of computation unit inside it that is not uh, a laptop or a desktop or a server is going to be using one of the grandchildren of this guy over here um, arm in interestingly stands for acorn risk machine so acorn computers made this uh, computer architecture um, it was a risk architecture a reduced instruction set uh, computer and so they called it an acorn risk machine and um, the uh, um, the acronym for that is arm and now everybody knows arm because it is the leading architecture for embedded computers this chip was released in 1985 in uh, 3 micron CMOS technology with 25,000 transistors um, and the interesting thing here is that the whole reference code for this architecture was written in, written in 808 lines of basic um, it was never sold as a commercial part a product interestingly it was just a crow processor for the BBC micro and uh, later on on, they came out with the further versions of the architecture arm v2 arm v3 which uh, little by little became more and more popular and somehow found their way into every machine we have at home pretty much